neuroplasticity and critical periods real quick. Um, I'm going to introduce paper one, which is going to be due near the end of the month, and then we're going to do our debate, and then I have a couple scenarios for you guys to kind of try out and apply what we learned the past couple days about the brain and behavior and all that. Yes. Okay, so, advocate prior knowledge. What does neuroplasticity mean? Anyone want to give it a shot? Kids haven't met, made many connections, so they can like overcome things that adults can because yeah. Because their brains are more valuable. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's a good point. So uh, yeah, kids can overcome maybe traumatic events or maybe some structural damage because their brains are more malleable and um, they're able to overcome or not overcompensate but compensate for the damages done in their brain. Um, by, say, a traumatic event. And so what does this mean about children in education? It means that you need to have the right experiences in the classrooms and even earlier on in life. Um, there are no critical periods for academic subjects. So remember before we talked about the critical period, periods for a lot of sensory things like vision, hearing, language. Uh, remember that there's no critical periods for academic subjects. And uh, we talked about the deprivation thing. So if your needs aren't being met, and Education isn't a priority. Um, so let's. I want to talk a little bit about um, the deprivation thing again, right here at the bottom, because I think it's kind of an important and interesting subject. Um, and so, if we're talking about things like early on, so things like malnutrition, uh, deprivation, kind of a antisocial maybe uh, upbringing, that really hurts um, a lot of the you know structures in your brain. Um, one of these is called the limbic system or the limbic structures. Does anyone recognize that term? Yeah. Um, it's the part of your brain. It's kind of in your temporal lobe, and it's responsible for things like emotion. And uh, the limbic system is made up of structures like the amygdala, which controls things like fear or uh, rewards, the gyrus, and um, the hippocampus, which are things like memory and stuff like that. And um, this is really important because as you're developing when you're really young, these are the structures that are responsible for things like socialization, learning about fear, uh, learning about people, learning about social skills, making memories, and all that kind of really important emotional um, development. And so an example of this is if, say, a baby has a kind of a neglectful mother. During that first year of life, a baby is really, really interested in looking at faces. And a baby will look at almost anyone's face, even if you're a stranger. And they want to make that eye contact, and they want to make that social connection to someone just by looking at them. Um, even if the mother is kind of neglectful, the baby will still try to get look at the mother's face and get the mother's attention because it wants that social connection so badly. It's just so important for development. Um, say the baby is again that neglectful mother is kind of a deprived <coughs> environment, and so uh, the baby won't be able to make those social connections in that limbic structure uh, area of the brain, and that causes a lot of problems because later on during the synaptic pruning, which we talked about before, so that's the pruning of all those unnecessary and um, kind of irrelevant synapses, uh, the baby will maintain that kind of irregular synapses structure or there's irregular synapses. And um, that's really bad because it affects how the baby will develop socially and emotionally. Um, and that's my example of uh, kind of a direct thing about a deprived environment. And so you can kind of generalize what I just said about you know other systems of the brain, socially, emotionally, um, physically. Uh, if they don't get those experiences, those kind of um, aberrant and um, just bad and wrong uh, synapses will maintain and um, it may result in kind of a 
psychological or emotional or social distress later on in life. Um, so, what does that mean in real life? What is that kind of, what can you observe about this? This may result in things like, like really pathological shyness over the aggressive uh, behaviors or um, social withdrawal. So, that's kind of what that means. Does anyone have any questions about that? So, in short, you know, those developmental periods are really important because it affects brain structures and it may result in kind of uh, socially socially abnormal behaviors. Okay, again some more review. The characteristic of the human brain. What I talked about before, when we are born our brains aren't really set up in a certain way. Our brains are malleable or plastic and they're ready to be shaped like experiences, so we can adjust to um, As our experiences shape our brain, our brains in turn commit to certain organizations, so that's what I was kind of referring to with the baby and the social um, exposure to the mother. So given that social exposure and given that experience, that will directly affect the baby's brain and limbic system, in my example, for either good or bad. Um, and so this makes children especially receptive to good and bad experiences. So if they're given those good experiences and they are exposed to that, you know, positive social interaction when they're like one year old and they're given all that, you know, they get to look at faces, people smile at them, you get that nice little baby talk and all that good stuff, they are going to, that's a good experience and that's good for the baby's brain and good for the baby's limbic system. Versus um, if they don't get that, so if they are not being given that social interactions, that will affect them <coughs> negatively and it might ensue like I discussed earlier. And so children are quite literally impressionable. So everything we do happens. Okay, and so we're going to talk a little bit about the research gap. And so what does this mean? It means it's kind of the gap between what researchers do and how this informs uh, practice or educators. And so um, the question we've been asked is some educators are less likely to be informed about brain development and its connection to learning. Why do you think that might be? talking about critical period. 
that are called experience dependent and experience expectant. Um, the name kind of explains what it means. Experience dependent means that you need this experience to, to uh, activate your brain function and to function properly. So that would be like the kitten eye experiment. Those cats need to see and have the experience of seeing during that critical period in order to activate those uh, brain structures. So things like maybe an occipital lobe and maybe the parietal lobe uh, to be able to see. That is experience dependent. That experience needs to happen. It depends on it. Uh, versus experience expected, which is kind of saying that the experience is expected to happen at that time. It's not as necessary, but it's very helpful for that experience to happen. And the brain expects to have that experience in order to function properly. That was kind of Okay, so let's introduce that paper. So, your paper, don't make it more than five pages, double space, please. It's due on October 24th. Those are the top priorities, right? Okay, so I want you to select a course that you've uh, taken in the past two years and kind of recall specific examples of what the teacher did in that class and maybe what you learned, so the topic, and how you learned it. This doesn't necessarily have to be a course. I think I kind of want to open this up to other learning experiences. So maybe you went to a conference, or you did a study, or you uh, learned a new sport, or just had some sort of learning experience. Um, you can talk about that too. I think that'll make it more interesting for uh, Chris and I to read. <laughs> um, okay, so I want you to select at least four different examples from this learning experience that you select. And I want you to identify how you learned it and how you learned it in the course. And then I want you to analyze each of those scenarios according to a uh, basic learning mechanism that we learned in the first unit or uh, one of the ones that we use in learn. We learned in unit two. So that's like brain, brain plasticity, memory, and I can't think of the last one. So. What you'll do is you will say you picked a gymnastics, no, 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 that's silly. Say you picked a math course, and the teacher taught you math by uh, analogy. So you would analyze that you know, particular aspect of math with analogies, and I want you to use those terms. So say like, the teacher used um, a, let's say, cats, as a base case, and then they used addition as a target case, and they mapped and aligned those base cases to target cases. Um, do you kind of get the jargon that I'm using? Yeah? Um, and then make sure you explain everything. Again, this is kind of like the test. I want you to be able to write this and explain everything as if Chris and I don't know anything about what, what you're talking about. So define all your terms. Um, Really be really explicit, and uh, if you think you're over-explaining, that means you're doing a good job. That means you're writing the paper how we want it. Here's some more. Uh, the format, I want it to be, so I want you to give your example in the first paragraph, and then I want you to analyze your first paragraph. So say like, in math class, we learned how to do X, Y, and Z. I learned X, Y, and Z through this, and this, and this. And then I want you to analyze it. So say something like, um, one could analyze X, Y, and Z through analogical reasoning. And then, you know, base case, target case, map align, that sort of thing. This is an enriched analogy because such and such and such. Then do that with paragraph two. So put the example and then analyze it and keep going until you reach, uh, what was that, four? Yeah, four. So a good way to think of this is maybe you have five pages to write this, maybe one uh, example per page plus intro and conclusion, and there you have it. I'll have the requirements on D2L for a little bit more information, a little bit more explicit direction, but this is the basic overview of it. 